Well, good evening and welcome. I'd like to uh, just introduce our candidate in a few minutes, but uh, first, this is a clean election sponsored debate, um, that, or forum, I guess, with one candidate. It's not really a debate. Um, the clean elections organization sponsors these um, uh, types of forums throughout the districts for the state candidates for House of Representatives as well as the state Senate. And uh, we had a primary forum where most of the candidates showed up, the Republicans anyway, sorry, Leo. Um, <laughs> and uh, now we, as part of our obligation to the clean elections uh, group, are sponsoring the second in the forum prior to the general election. So our candidate tonight who is here is Leo Biasucci. Did I do that? Well done. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, Leo is running as a Green Party candidate. And Leo, you have a couple of minutes to tell us who you are and why you're running. Perfect. Thank you guys uh, for having me here tonight. Um, I'm actually uh, probably one of the few born and raised here in Mojave County. Um, my parents moved here in the mid-70s from Italy and moved to Lake Havasu City. I uh, was born in the early 80s, attended uh, grammar school, graduated from Lake Havasu High School in 2000. Uh, no offense to any local Mojave High graduates, but I think I was on a few teams that beat you guys in soccer, tennis, and in football, but uh, hopefully I still can get your vote. Um, I, after high school, I went to the University of Arizona, uh, graduated uh, from the LR College of Business with a degree in Business Administration and Management. I've worked for uh, companies such as General Electric as a financial auditor as well as Geico as a claims rep. And for the last 10 years, I've been uh, the chief financial officer for Mojave Traffic School uh, and part owner. Uh, we teach traffic school here in Bullhead, Havasu, Kingman, as well as uh, DOI school. So um, I don't think I recognize any of you in the crowd, so that's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, oh, is there somebody here? <laughs> Any bad drivers? Um, yeah. So the, the reason I, I decided to run is uh, because I, I really came to a point where being brought up in, in Mojave County, I've seen it grow to, to what it is today. Um, and in the last few years, I've, I've personally seen a lot of things done in legislation, um, heard a lot of things done um, uh, through colleagues and friends that they really didn't like, uh, whether it was education, whether it was uh, financing our transportation, um, our roads, um, heritage fund. There, there are a lot of areas that people were just not happy with how the funding was being distributed. And it came to a point where I thought to myself, you know, I can sit here and complain about it or I can actually do something about it. And, and so I decided this year that, you know, it's time for me to do something. I want to do something that, regardless of party affiliation, I want to help everybody because that's what it's about. It's not about who's Republican, who's Democrat, who's Green, who's Independent. It doesn't matter, in my opinion, anymore. It's about how can we get the right people in legislation who are going to do the right thing and vote the right way to help everybody. Because I think a lot of us are at the point where we're tired of the politics and, and we just want things to get done and get them done right and get them done now. And um, I hope by the end of this forum, not debate, um, I, can, I can share some of my views and, and you guys can agree. Okay, well, thank you. That takes care of my first question, which <laughs> was what differentiates you from a Republican or a Democrat? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But <laughs> um, so lightning round, um, these questions came from the Clean Elections uh, Commission. Um, in an attempt to lighten the mood for tonight's debate, a quick lightning round of this or that. And I'll start with the easy one because you already answered it as well. Sure. Lumberjack, Sun Devil, or Wildcat? Uh, bear down all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Snapchat or Instagram? Ooh, Instagram. Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Oh, homebrewed organic coffee. Ooh, Does that count? <laughs> wow, that wasn't a choice. Okay. I know. <laughs> Okay, well, um, there are several questions on here, but we're also accepting questions from the audience. I think Elaine handed out some cards. If you'd like to ask a question, we ask that you please write it down and uh, hand it back to Elaine so that we follow the proper procedure for tonight's forum. 
So I'll go ahead and start off with one of the questions under education. Looking back at the May special election, the vote on Proposition 123, the Arizona Education Finance Amendment, was very close. Were you supportive of the measure? If so, and if not, why not? I think Prop 123 uh, took me about two months to really decide if I was for it or against it. One of my main platforms is education. I think education is vital to a growing economy. It's vital to get people to move here, whether it's doctors, um, corporations, uh, any business in general. A lot of people, before they move to a town, they want to see what is the education like? What kind of schools will my kids go to? And with Prop 123, you have a situation where legislation, legislation promised the schools a certain amount of money. Then they said, kidding, we're going to give you 70% of it. That's not okay with me. I, I don't understand how they can get away with that because education or whatever it may be, transportation, in this situation, education, if they are told they're getting a certain amount of money, they prepare for that. And then when that's taken away, I mean, nobody would be okay with that in any situation. If you, if this government said, you know, you get $2,000 in taxes back at the end of the year, but we're going to give you 1000 who in their right mind would be okay with that? Nobody. So the part of me that agrees with it is education needs money in this state. I mean, we're, we're ranked at the bottom for education. Um, there's no doubt about it. The way it went up, about happening with, with Prop 123, I didn't like. Um, I ended up at the end voting yes just because money had to come in. And if it didn't come in through Prop 123, it'd mean more legal fees and, and, and more fights between legislation and the, and the schools. And it's about what can we do now to better our schools. And that was the solution there. So as much as I didn't like how it was done, I did agree with it because bottom line, education needs to be funded properly. Okay. Well, um, following up on that then, um, teachers in Arizona, are, their pay is ranked towards the bottom, if right. not the very bottom. How would you improve that as a legislator? You know, it's, um, we definitely are, teachers definitely are paid one of the lowest in this country. And it's a tough, it's a tough debate because you, you do have teachers who could be in the system for 30 years and they're not good teachers. Getting paid 60000 a year or 70000 in California and they're terrible teachers. You could have a new teacher come in getting paid 28000 and they're unbelievable. So, yes, money matters because you do attract more people when you pay more. I mean, that's just the, the truth of the, the situation. So I do think that we do need to have a higher pay for teachers, but at the same time, we just still need to make sure we're hiring the right teachers because you, you could hire, like I said, somebody who's going to get paid 80000 and they're terrible. So, um, you know, bottom line, we, we do need to, to look at the pay for teachers. It does need to to uh, match up with the rest of the country. And when you do bring in quality teachers, uh, you're gonna help your education system. So, um, you know, one thing, whether it's through um, the proper money going to education, like it should, um, you're gonna be able to pay teachers more. Um, and so, you know, that's something that I hope to do in legislation is make sure money that is promised to schools goes to schools so teachers are paid, um, schools and, and students are given the, the, the right kind of funding they need to excel. One of our local school districts here in the Bullhead area is um, floating a um, bond issue. Mm -hmm. And if it passes, it will increase teachers' pay. Would you be in favor of something like that in similar districts across the state? Absolutely. Um, I actually went to the uh, Lake Havasu City board meeting last week. Uh, they're having a similar issue. Mm -hmm. um, they have a the bond and override will be on the ballot in November. Uh, which is going to help with everything from infrastructure to schools to teacher pay. Um, you know, and, it's, and I have no problem when cities take it into their own hands to say, hey, you know what, we're not getting enough from the state. Let's have a vote amongst the city, which I, I like. It's unfortunate that they have to go to that measure to get the money because it should be coming from legislation anyway. So there, there shouldn't be the burden because, you know, you have arguments with, with people who I've heard that say, hey, look, I, I don't have any children in school. I have no interest in the schooling system. I'm retired or I can't afford my uh, property taxes to go up. And, and Lake Havasu is gonna go up. And a lot of people say, I can't afford it. 
you know, why, why are, what do we do? And, and I couldn't agree more. But if you have the right people in the legislation who are going to do what's right, we wouldn't be in this issue. We wouldn't have the problem of passing bonds and overrides and, and raising rates of, of, of property taxes because people in, in legislation are doing the right thing and voting the right way. And Prop 123 doesn't have to happen. And bonds and overrides don't have to happen. And everybody gets paid like they should. Uh, but in situations where it does happen, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, we, we need to do what we need to do uh, to make our schools a priority in the state and county. Okay. Well, let's move on to jobs and employment. Do you support an increase in the minimum wage? Um, I think everybody can agree that, you know, the minimum wage now, I don't know anybody who can afford a living on minimum wage. If you have a, a husband and wife making minimum wage with two, three children, with a rent, with car payments, it's just, it just doesn't make sense. Um, so raising the minimum wage makes a lot of sense. Um, you have the one issue of small businesses. I'm a small business owner. Um, if you say, okay, now you need to pay $15 an hour, that's definitely going to cut in to running your business properly, which I completely understand. At the same time, you need something to make families get off of, of assistance from government because they're getting paid minimum wage. So I think that we need to figure out a solution. Some states they state that if you make a certain amount of net profit uh, per year, then you're required to have a certain amount of minimum wage. For example, Walmart, they brought in billion, something like 14 billion in, in net last year. Should they be paying 8.50 an hour? Probably not. I mean, that's, that's kind of crazy. But if you're a mom and pop and you're, you're making 20, 30,000 in profit at the end of the year, do you pay $15 an hour? It, you, everybody would go out of business. So it's a very, very tricky situation. I think w at legislation, you can figure out a compromise. I mean, this is what legislation does. They look even at other states. How does it work there? What did they do? How did they do it? Let's incorporate what they've done and make it work here. I think it's silly to just come up with an idea and say, okay, we're moving minimum wage to $15 an hour now. Um, whether it's a gradual increase or a certain guidelines, um, I think it needs to happen. But I, I don't think we need to rush into it like, Obamacare, where we kind of just jumped in, and and there, there was a lot of a lot of messes going on with that. So, yeah. um, um, okay, studying other states and mm -hmm. what they did and right and what they did wrong. What's your position on Proposition 205, the initiative to uh, legalize recreational marijuana? Um, if you look at Colorado, who obviously just they passed that. Uh, last year, their profits were, or sales, excuse me, were one billion dollars in marijuana, which is astronomical. I mean, it's it's a huge number. I don't think they even expected to happen. Um, but off of that, their sale or their their taxes they got off of it was 135 million dollars, which they decided a portion of that will go to education. So, marijuana is tricky. Um, yes, it's a drug, technically. So is alcohol. Um, you know, it's it's it, there's a way to handle it properly. I think if you actually pass the marijuana law, you handle it like alcohol. You get you're you're caught driving with marijuana um, in your system. Same as a DUI. Treat it the same. Treat everything the same as it as it would be with alcohol. Because alcohol, like I said, it's a drug. It's it could be considered a gateway drug. People get addicted to it. So if we if we can handle it properly. Um, look at Colorado, how are they doing it? How are they uh, doing it effectively? Where's their money going? And if you can distribute money properly, even the money from there to go to rehab programs is an option. Um, I think there's a the right way to do it, and I, I personally believe, you know what, if we can make it work, why not try? You can always go back if it, and, and do it, and you can go back and say, you know what, this is not working, and let's figure out something else. Yeah. I know the moderator is not supposed to debate, but... No, no, no you're good. There's nobody else here to debate with me, so <laughs> debate away. <laughs> um, I was just at a presentation in Mesa on Friday, and the way they presented it, it was the state attorney general from Colorado, mm -hmm. um, Governor Ducey, as well as um, county attorney Montgomery from Maricopa County. And the way they presented it, it was because of the language for this voter-approved proposition that there is no going back to fix mm. something that we find is wrong after the fact, and that it also gives the statutory right to people to get high. 
we don't have a statutory right to get drunk. Mm. Gotcha. That's, that's a good argument. Well, what I took away from that presentation. Right. Any comments from? I'm looking at you. You've got to have something. Yes, sir. Right. True. Absolutely. And I and I think that's a good point because you still make the decision to get behind the vehicle to drive drunk, right. and it should be the same with anything. You're you're held responsible for your actions, and if you you hold that accountability, I think you can you can legalize it and, and have it done correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and we just got to make sure we do it right. Like I said, another, that's a, it's a huge jump to say let's legalize marijuana. But if we do the research, even if it's not on this ballot, mm -hmm. we can make it right and do it right and make sure we follow the right protocol. And you know, whether it's Colorado or any other state, you know, let's, let's find the right way to do it and, and do it. Right, okay. Well, we'll leave that one. <laughs> Unless you have a comment. No, you're not going to say anything. Oh, <laughs> all righty then. <laughs> okay. Um, health care. Let's mm -hmm. go to uh, health care. Reports over the last couple of years have noted Arizona has one of the worst shortages of doctors in the United States. How would you, as a legislator, attempt to address this issue? Uh, I think this goes back to education. Uh, a lot of people um, don't understand how that might be the case, but when you have doctors leaving Arizona at high numbers, um, even in Havis Lake Havasu, I've seen a lot of doctors leave the area. You have to look back, okay, what's, what's the reasoning? Is it pay? Probably not. Um, but if you really look deep down, like I said before, when doctors come to a new city to take a new job, a lot of times they're coming with families. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a poor educational system, they're either not gonna come or they're gonna leave as soon as they figure out how poor the education system is. And it happens all the time. I hear it all the time with doctor friends that I know how um, you know, they just are ready to find a place that will support their children and, and support their growth. And, and I think once you put money in the education, you're going to attract great doctors, you're gonna attract corporations to move to Arizona, companies to move to Arizona, because you, you bring everybody with you when you do that. It's not just education, well, these are for the students. No, it's, it's for everybody that comes in. It's all connected. Um, I sat down and spoke with uh, the Director of Partnership uh, Economic Development in Lake Havasu, uh, and, and he told me exactly the same thing. He goes, Leo, the, the issue we have is I can't get people to come here. I can't. I can't get companies to come here. They won't commit because they look at our education and they're, they don't want their students in the schooling system that we have. So that's coming from the one guy whose job is to get companies and corporations and people to come to the cities. And if he's saying that, you know there's a problem with your education. Um, and that's really what it comes down to with me is you know we need to get that back up top. We can't be ranked 45th or 46th or 47th and, and we can't be spending, Arizona we spend 3,000 in state money towards students. Mm -hmm. We spend 23,000 for prisoners. It's crazy. So yeah. I hope to change that when, when I get in. Okay. Um, election laws. In general, do you agree with voters having to provide identification in order to vote in Arizona? I think it's important to provide identification because you have the possibility of fraud if you don't. Um, somebody could show up at the poll, say your name, they don't have ID, and let you vote for them. It's kind of a big problem. Um, you know, it's, it, it can turn into a, a fraudulent situation. I think by providing ID, I don't think that's asking too much. You're, I mean, you show ID for a lot of things in, in, in the state, and, and a lot of things you do. You catch a check, you get pulled over, you show ID, you wanna prove that's who you are. Um, when you're, we're talking about voting, I think it's, it's extremely important because you want to make sure the right person is placing the right vote. Um, and, and, you know, it's kind of on the aspect of uh, ballot harvesting. Um, that was a big issue here with, with people going door to door, asking individuals for their ballots, that they got the mail-in ballots. And that poses a problem because if that person, who's not even an official, comes to your house and says, oh, you know, you haven't voted, let me take your ballot and I'll turn it in for you. 
kind of a conflict of interest as well. So I think it's important to have some kind of identification. Um, and especially now, you can have mail-in ballots. So you know, people really you know, can't argue too much about, well, I don't have an ID. Well, you can, you can mail in your ballot you know, if that's really a concern for you. But I think IDing yourself before voting is it's, it's important to make, to make sure that we're getting the correct votes in from the right people. OK. Um, let's go to sustainability and the environment. You got the same questions I did, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> OK. In general, what are your thoughts on ways the state should address the on-growing drought affecting Lake Mead and the Colorado River, which we can see right out our window, um, in order to ensure a stable water supply for the future? Um, I think, you know, especially in Arizona, you have some bills or laws in place that protect our water supply, uh, the 100-year rule. Um, and, you know, it happened recently in Phoenix where um, some developers were coming in and they were trying to develop a large uh, project and they were trying to get by the idea of you know well we got to follow the rules because in Arizona we do what we can to protect our water um, it's vital especially in this area I mean we have the Colorado River this is our source of so many things this brings in revenue for tourism it you know supplies this all the way up down to Yuma I mean this is this is what we are here for this is what makes our economy thrive um, so we need to do everything we can to make sure we protect our water. Um, I'm a Green Party member, uh, and the main reason why is because I want to make sure our environment is protected. Um, a lot of people, they don't think about water or uh, protecting our environment because it's nothing you really worry about. If you don't see it, you really don't think about it too much. But all over this country, you have people buying up land where water is underneath, and, and they in essence, could have control of that water, which is the groundwater. I think we need to make sure that we protect our water. Uh, we need to make sure that um, it's not becoming contaminated. Um, and we need to make sure we, we pass whatever we need to do in legislation um, that, that the areas like the Colorado, even Lake Mead, um, we do what we can to make sure we're conserving the water. We don't turn into a California situation where um, they became, obviously, went to emergency measures to, to save their water supply. So. Um, well, you, you talked about the recreation benefits of the Colorado River, and you also talked about protecting the quality of the water. Right. How do you balance the two? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. It was yeah, mine. Well done. <laughs> um, I think you do need to find the balance, because I mean, you know as much as I do that boaters come here to enjoy this lake. Right. Um, but at the same time, you look at the situation of the regatta. Mm -hmm. Just happened here in Bullhead. Um, brings endless amounts of money into this town. So you have your, your issue there. Mm -hmm. Do you side with the money or do you protect your water? Um, they left just an enormous amount of trash that contaminated the whole area. And, you know, Mayor Brady, in my opinion, did the right thing on saying, let's halt it, let's figure it out, and then we'll get back to it. Because on the business side, I understand. That brings revenue in. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to help the economy. But you've got to figure out a solution. You've got to figure out a balance. And so as much as I think, well, maybe he should have thought more about it before he completely canceled it, I like the approach that he's saying, well, you know what? It's a problem. It was a problem. Let's figure out how to balance it out. And I think that needs to happen on all levels. I mean, you, you have a lot of funding taken away from uh, you know, the, the heritage funds, um, the, the boating funds with the ramps, and, and, and they're pulling money away from there. And it's slip, and slip funds as well, right. And it's, and it's, um, and it's a problem because you, you need to find that balance because you, you're right. You need to protect it, but you have the money coming in. And I just think it takes time to really sit down and think, OK, what can we do to, to please everybody? And I think that needs to happen before dress, you know, measures are taken. Okay. Are there any questions from the audience at all? I mean, I have a whole bunch more that I could keep going, but. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to ask a general question. Sure. Oh, 
okay, I need to paraphrase because I'm getting the sign. Repeat the question on the mic. Mm. Oh, you need to repeat the question on no, the you, microphone, you Jeremy. Oh, I do it. Yeah. Okay, so let me see if I get this right. Um, the airport director is wondering what your experience is or what your knowledge is of how aviation laws in the state of Arizona as well as federal interact with each other and the funding, I would assume, for airport projects. Did I get that one right? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have uh, much knowledge on that. Um, although I do travel quite a bit, I, I do believe and know how important airports are to especially here um you know one thing in lake havasu as well you have airport kingman you have airports it's used a lot for people to come in whether it's for business recreation use um enjoying the area i mean it's it's a, a really important part of the economy as well um, i know with bullhead you actually have a commercial still coming in here right we have charter flights charter flights okay right uh, which i know before you had was an American came through here? I'm not sure of the carrier that came in here back. America West, right, that came through Phoenix. Um, but yeah, I personally don't know issues involving with with airport, but I'd be happy to, to hear what they are if you have them and share my opinion. Um, being very active on the airport authority, yeah. I know that there is some challenges, are some challenges with funding of airport projects that the Arizona Department of Transportation is torn about highways versus aviation mm. and, and where the dollars go, as well as um, our air traffic control tower is a private contract, right? And there is some movement afoot almost every year to defund privately contracted control towers. And we have some hundred, okay, yes, Mr. Hastings? I, I think the large issue is the fact that the state has swept the aviation fund. The swept, and swept other funds, and therefore we're not getting the money at this time that we were told we were going to get. Right. So just for the record, you're saying that uh, the money is being taken away from airport funding, from legislation in general. And, and I think that's my main purpose in general is that exact reason why I'm running, is because when you're promised something, you should stick to your promise. And it's happening a lot in legislation where they're not doing it in multiple areas. Um, and you know, there's a reason why the funding was there in the first place for airports. Um, and for them to take it away to, to help themselves recoup their budget, which they messed up on somewhere else, is, is not okay. Um, and that's something that I just, I don't like, I don't agree with, and something I, if, if there was a bill that I could create, one of them would be literally that as legislation you cannot go back and say we're not going to fulfill our promise to a bill that was created, whether it's uh, something voted on by the public or agreed upon in legislation, I don't think it's right that they have that power to say, well, we're not going to give you that money anymore because we want to put it somewhere else. That's not okay. And, and that needs to change. And there needs to be more opposition from legislators to, to say that's not okay. I think too many just agree with it and don't voice their concerns. And, and I, I, I just think that's something that I know I will not allow when okay. I'm there. All right, um, any other questions? Okay, I have one more and then we'll call it time. Is that okay, Jeff? All right. <laughs> okay, um, one final question. Sure. If elected, what's the first bill you want to introduce? <laughs> um, I think I just answered that one, but well, I'll say it again. I'll say it in more <laughs> detail. Um, when I sat down and spoke to uh, various people. I, I spoke on the phone with uh, uh, with the mayor, Bray, Brady, here. I spoke with um, the school board members. I, score, I spoke with small business owners. I've, I've spoken with uh, the f leader of the fire uh, council in, in Dolan Springs. Um, I've kind of reached out to everybody in my territory to, to, to ask you, what, what is the issue that you're dealing with? What are, if, if I was elected tomorrow, what could I do? And every single person that I spoke to said the exact same thing. They said, we're tired of money that we were promised 
to be taken away from us. We're tired of it. We're tired of legis legislation pulling funds from areas that we need funds for. And, and when we're promised that, we react. And then all of a sudden it's pulled and we're stuck here and we don't have the funding we need that we were promised we were going to, and, and we're, we're now in the hole. And so I want to create a bill that says you cannot do that because it shouldn't even be legal to do that. If you're promised a certain amount of money, you should be given that money from the state. The, the money is there. They're just deciding that it's not important enough. But who's, why are they there to decide that? It should be the people who decide where the money should go. We're here to represent the people. I'm here to represent the people. If I'm being told that that's not OK, I couldn't agree with that more. And I'm going to do something about that. And I, I know the first bill I'm going to try to push through will say, if something is passed that the people voted on and the people wanted, you cannot come in and say, as legislators, we're just going to take the money. On all levels, it's wrong. And, and that's something that I just probably the most thing I'm passionate about, because it, it goes on all levels, whether it's education, whether it's funding parks, whether it's transportation, everywhere money's being pulled. And, and where is it going? Uh, they decide, well, we want to put it to prisons. Well, who, who said that's OK? I, I know I'm not OK with that. I know teachers are not OK with that. I know a lot of people are not OK with that. Um, so I, I hope that um, that's something I can do when I get in there. OK. Well, let's have a 60-second conclusion and why we should vote for you. Sure. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I'm sorry my competition couldn't be here tonight, but uh, hopefully I didn't scare them away. Um, but I think the main thing I want to get across is that I'm, I'm running because I want to do what's right. I honestly, I'm not a career politician. Um, I don't care if I'm elected for two years or 10 years. I want to get in because I want to do what's right for people because it's not about political parties anymore, in my opinion. I think it's about what can I do for everybody? What can legislation do that's going to better us now, in 10 years, in 20 years? Why can't we have people in office who are going to do what's best for everybody on all levels? Um, I think that I'm different in that aspect, that I'm not, I don't take endorsements from super PACs or dark money or whatever it may be. I, I, I don't because I don't want to have any kind of conflict of interest. I want to do what's right for everyone. And I hope that you guys can, can finally agree that that needs to happen in legislation now. I think it's been a really long time that we're, we're frustrated. A lot of us are, are ready for change. Um, I am a third party. Um, and I think that that's a better option because I look at all angles. I look at everybody's perspective. And I take that into consideration. And I hope I can earn your vote um, on November 8th. Thanks. Thank you very much, Thanks. Leo. It was a pleasure. Pleasure. Absolutely. Thank and you. thank you for questions, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.